Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs, and welcome to Making Comics 101. This is a bonus episode. So the way we're doing this is we've got what are sort of the uh, proper uh, episodes or issues. We're calling them issues because we're kind of keeping it all comics. But uh, so this is a bonus issue, and it is attached to, it's sort of a companion of issue number one, which is just getting started. So with each one of these videos, like I said, we're going to have the proper, proper issue, and then we're going to uh, go into a bonus issue that's kind of tied to that, but go a little more in depth. So that's kind of what this is going to be. Now, I was sort of racking my brain to think of what am I going to do as far as uh, a companion to getting the getting started issue. Um, I kind of covered a bunch of different uh, exercises and things that you can use to get you started. If you haven't seen that video, you can go back and watch it. It's not recommended to watch this video. These are designed where you can kind of jump in almost at any point. Now, it may be helpful if you want the full experience to go through and watch every episode and every issue that goes along with that episode uh, in sequence, but again, it's not necessary. So what, what I'm gonna do today, I think what the best thing to do as far as attaching a, a, a bonus episode to the theme of getting started is uh, talk about tools because the one question I probably get asked more than any other question uh, when doing comics is what kind of tools do you use? So uh, with that, there are a few caveats that I wanna get right off the bat um, before I start kind of showing you what tools I use and that is just to understand that you could use every single tool that I use and that doesn't mean you're gonna draw like me. I mean, you may do use every tool that I have and maybe you draw better than me. Um, it just it depends but the tools aren't really what make you a great artist now certain tools uh, can work better for certain people and everything and that's the other thing I want to talk about is you know just because I like these particular tools it doesn't mean you will or they will work for you so you kinda I, I, and I tell that to everyone when they ask me what kind of tool I use I mean uh, number one, like I said, you could use the tools that I'm using and you're not going to draw like me. Just like if I use whatever tools, say, Art Adams is using, I'm not going to draw like Art Adams. So, um, But still, I understand the idea of asking uh, what the tools are because I do that same thing. Like if I see somebody using a kind of cool tool, I'll say, oh, that's kind of cool. And, I, and I'll ask what it is and maybe I'll try it out. Maybe I love it. Maybe I don't. So you kind of have to do some experimenting. So with that out of the way, uh, why don't I get through and uh, just get started talking about the tools that I use. Now, I'm gonna go through you know, the tools I use for penciling, inking, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just, this is just sort of a basic rundown. Um, it's gonna be sort of, I'm, not, I'm just gonna briefly touch on the different tools that I use. Uh, now, when we get into those areas, when I get into the penciling episode and then later the inking episode, uh, all that stuff, I'll get more in depth on those. So, so that stuff's coming down the road, but I just wanna just briefly kind of show everyone the tools that I use for creating comics. Now, uh, let's kind of, uh, I'll start off with, uh, like I said, penciling. So, penciling, uh, my number one tool for comics, now, I guess I should start with this. For sketching, a lot of times I'll do my sketching with these. These are uh, Prismacolor Coal Erase uh, pencils. I don't usually use these when I'm drawing my comic book page pages. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention that uh, right now I'm going to be talking about all analog tools. I do also do digital uh, comics, and I'll briefly touch on some of those. Um, but because it's just like, oh, I use this software, I use this hardware, um, it's hard to hard to get too much into that. You know, um, I did a whole video on uh, just different hacks for comic book artists, and it was mostly analog tools because it's kind of hard to give hacks for digital tools because it's just like, what would that be? Just uh, use this shortcut or, or whatever so but this isn't to say that I, I am just only you know saying only use uh, traditional uh, tools or materials that's not the case I use both um, I will touch on some of the digital stuff that I use later on but let's get started with just some of the analog tools so for sketching I use these uh, these uh, Prismacolor Coal Erase pencils as the name implies they are color that's what the coal stands for and they do erase uh, fairly you know I have a fairly light hand if you got a heavy hand they n might not erase as well as you'd like them to and I just use whatever colors uh, I'll, I'll kind of flip different 
different through different colors. Uh, say if I was doing, I just did a fan art sketch uh, recently of Yoda, so I just used a green. If I was doing uh, a character that's more red, I might use red. But it's there's really there's. There's no rhyme or reason beyond that to what colors I use. I just kind of mess around. And for whatever reason, I don't usually, this is my own personal preference, but I don't like to use the regular graphite pencils. And that, that is kind of weird. But like I said, you may think that's weird. And like, I, I love graphite pencils and I love that color and everything. Then that's perfect for you. But this is just me talking about the kind of stuff that I use. And it's all, you know, seasoned to taste. So now when I do actually get into drawing my, uh, my comics, uh, analog uh, I use what is called a lead holder now I, I I'm kind of surprised I, I found a lot of other artists use these um, and the reason why I'm surprised is because my first art job ever was working at an uh, architectural firm um, and at that time that was this is a long time ago even before like computer aided drafting CAD and everything so they did a lot of those sketches uh, you know uh, traditionally um, back then and these are the tools that they used so it was kind of surprised because I just got used to using these tools and I was surprised that a lot of other artists still use uh, these uh, lead holders and basically it's kind of like a three kind of three-part system you've got the lead holder like this and uh, the other thing I want to mention if you go to circworks.com slash tools or just go to circworks.com there's a tab for tools click on that it lists where you can find all of this stuff um, this isn't the one I usually use. I usually use this Stadler one, but it's a, sort of a blue one. But anyway, so uh, they have these LEDs. You can see here, this is the, these are the Prismacolor turquoise LEDs. These are non-photo blue. Now there is a little bit of reasoning behind the blue in this case, and that is back in the day when you would take photocopies or photostats or whatever, anything you draw on this blue isn't going to show up. So you wouldn't have to erase that. You could go over and do your inking and you wouldn't have to go in and erase all that kind of stuff. So um, so that's kind of up to you. And you can do the same thing with Photoshop now. You can kind of key out the blue or whatever. So that's the reason behind the non-photo blue. And I just like the look of it. I like the, the look of that non-photo blue. Even though when I work digitally, I usually work in blue just because I'm kind of used to that and I like that. So. Um, so anyway, so, and these, you know, just to show you, these, they just fit right in here. So you just feed those through there, and that's kind of, and the other thing I want to mention here, let me put this back in here. Now, this particular pencil has a uh, special sharpener. You can't use any sharpener for this. Um, I'll kind of break this apart, and I'll show you that, um, it's, you see that? That's got a little grinding thing. And what happens is this thing spins around. So you put your pencil in here and spin around like that. And voila, you get your pencil sharpener. The other thing is a lot of these pencils have a built-in sharp, sharp, let me see. You see that, that little hole there? This is something I didn't realize, but that is actually a sharpener. You can pull that out you can go in here. And so, and you can go that like that and you can sharpen it that way, which is, very interesting. I never knew that you could do that until recently, and I've been using this tool for a very long time. So anyway, so pencil-wise, that's what I use. And as far as erasers, uh, my erasers of choice, I like this, uh, I don't know the brand, but just these black erasers. Uh, I like the way those are. And the other one is a kneaded eraser, which as the name implies, you kind of knead them and you can kind of bend them in different shapes. So if you if you need to get like a certain angle or whatever, and uh, it's, and you can kind of just squish them up and then, you know, they're kind of good as new. So that, those are some of the, the that as far as penciling goes, um, Oh, and then when I'm using my color erase pencils, I, I just kind of use one of these metal uh, metal sharpeners. You can use a, you can use a mechanical sharpener, you know, electric sharpener or whatever. But I just kind of like those because they're portable. I can take them wherever I need to go. So how about we get into inking? Um, now there's a few different ways you can ink. When I'm doing my personal comic book, when I'm doing like Young and the Dead, which is my comic book, uh, I usually use. Uh, a brush. Now I work with a couple different brushes. Um, this is a Winsor Newton Series 7. Um, sometimes these can get a little pricey. These are really good brushes. This is the ones I particularly like to use. Um, but if you're looking for a more 
economical brushes. This is a Cotman watercolor brush. And of course you can get these in all different sizes. This, this one that I'm using, I think this is a, this may be an aught or maybe a one. Um, and you can go down to like triple aught or you can go up to like, I think two. Uh, if you're doing, if you're filling like spotting blacks or whatever, you can go a, a little, you can go a little thicker brush. But I usually stick around a one or like an aught for, for the work that I do. But that again is personal preference. So um, those are the, the brushes that I use. Now a lot of, some people don't like using the brushes or some people have a hard time learning how to use them. Um, some people like to use the quill. Uh, now a quill, they you know you've got this little holder, and then you've got these little quills that you can get. These are probably like a what, what's the uh, I forget what the size is for these. It's a pretty common size, a 102. So yeah, the 102 is probably the most common size. I never really got the hang of using a quill. So this I, I hardly ever use this, but um, probably when I get around to the inking, I'm gonna have to practice to kind of show you guys because this is a pretty popular tool as far as. Uh, traditional inking. Now, when, you, when you're when using any of these inking tools, obviously you're going to need ink. So I'm going to show you the inks that I use. My favorite ink right now currently is Deleter Black. Uh, and this is uh, number five, which uh, I was using number five and I switched to number four. Number four is sort of more of a matte finish. Um, number five, it's got a little bit of a glossy finish. Um, I kind of prefer the matte, but I'll, you know, this is, they're both really great inks. Uh, Deleter makes fantastic it. I found that most of the Japanese inks, for whatever reason, I just gravitate to them a little more. They seem to be a little smoother. So I, I typically stick with these Deleter Black uh, number four or number five if you want a little more of a glossy uh, finish. Um, some of the other inks that I use, uh, I used to use Black Magic a lot. It's uh, a little inconsistent as far as how dark it is. It used to be great and it seems like sometimes they water it down and sometimes it's just really, it's kind of inconsistent but this is probably the most, probably easy to get. You can get this at a Michaels or whatever and in a pinch I might use this so I've always got a bottle of that hanging around. Another nice ink is this. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star ink. This is a matte ink and it's this is a little different because it's an acrylic base. So it's almost, it's, it's not an acrylic paint, it's more of an ink. It's, it's not thick. But this is a really, before I discovered the deleter, I use this all the time. So this is a nice ink as well. Now for, for your whites, uh, the deleter also has a, a white. I think they have a, num a white number one and two. I don't remember exactly what the differences are. I've only tried the number two and it seems to work pretty well. Um, the other one is this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed, uh, bleed, or bleed Proof White. Um, it used to be a, a, a brand called Pro White. I don't know if they still make that, but this is, this is similar. And you just you have to water it down a little bit, but you can do, you know, you can do your white ink with that. Um, but if you don't want to deal with dipping your pen in ink and all that, which a lot of people don't, uh, brush pens have come a long way. So I've got a few different brush pens that I use. Uh, this one is my favorite and I, I think I've got these, I probably, I think I have these listed on my website, I'm not sure. If, if I don't, I will hopefully rectify that and change that before I get this video up. Because um, I, obviously it's in Japanese, I don't know, I think this is a Fude pen, but I think there's a lot of Fude pens. I don't re remember the brand, but I will try to put a link so you guys can find that. Um, same thing with this, this is a Zebra pen, it is again also in Japanese. And this pen, which I've, I've bought before and I've used, this is a, a refillable one. It's got little cartridges, let me just pop this open. Um, but you just kind of have to look around for some, just some of the Japanese pens, like go to jetpens.com and just try some of these out. But this is a nice pen too. Another popular one, which I don't have any on me right now, is the Pentel Pocket Brush. And for a while, and now this also, it's similar to this where it's refillable, but I tend to like this one a little better. This is, this is probably as far as, I bring these along to conventions and stuff. Uh, and, and you know when I do in-store signings and everything but if I if I want probably the next best thing to uh, actually using an actual brush um, I probably go with something like this and I'll try to remember to put links to those in the description uh, so those are some of the inks that I use now for spotting blacks like I said sometimes I'll get a thick brush and just dip pens um, or di dip brushes but this is a really cool tool this is a fiber or Faber-Castell pit pen 
It is super thick. Now, I've seen people that spot blacks with Sharpies, and if you're not familiar with the term spotting blacks, it's just basically filling in blacks. Um, so when you've got these big black areas, sometimes people will put like, you can also put like a little X, which would indicate that you're, you're supposed to put black in there. Like you could do that when you scan it in in Photoshop and just use a paint bucket. That's all simple. But um, if you but if you want to do it yourself on the page, sometimes if you're selling the artwork, you want to do all the blacks yourself. Um, these are great because they are they are they are not water soluble. They're permanent ink. Now I've seen people some people spot their blacks with sharpies. I would not recommend that because sharpies are not light fast, which means they're going to fade over time. They might turn purple or bluish or brown. Um, so you definitely want to use actual like India ink, and that's what's that's what's in these uh, these uh, pit pens, these pit artist pens. And this is I don't know if they come bigger than this, but this is a pretty good size, and it's pretty good for for filling in those black areas. Okay, so we've got the inking down. Uh, what are some of the other tools that I use? Well, uh, obviously when you're, if, if you want to get all your angles and everything, you've got to use rulers and things like that. So uh, French curves, you can kind of get, and these actually have some ellipses in the middle, most of them do. But you can get all kinds of little angle, not angles, but curves obviously with that. Um, and then you've got your circle templates and ellipse templates. Uh, for you know drawing circles in perspective you can use these ellipses and uh, for some of the larger circles I've got this um, but yeah it's, it, it really helps to have something like that another thing that I don't have here is a compass if you have a, uh, a larger area you probably want to have a compass uh, one that can probably fit both a pencil and an ink uh, and whatever you use for inking oh and speak I kind of jumped the gun here, so we're going to go back. Uh, but the other thing I forgot to mention also, uh, some of the pens that I use for white uh, are, this is a Sino gel pen and a Jelly Roll pen. These are really good. I use these all the times when I'm doing my sketching and also just to do whatever it is, stars or whatever, anything like that. And for straight lines, since we're talking about rulers right now, uh, you got to get a good set of microns. The one that I use the most is probably a number eight. Uh, but you know get a set you can buy a pack of like five just eights which I do because I like this size um, but you also want to maybe get like a pack that has you know uh, like a zero or not through whatever through eight or whatever so uh, I use microns all the time there are uh, uh, that fabric Castell also has their own I think pit pins that are this kind of this this style uh, and there's different brands and everything but you you want something to do, lay out your borders and everything uh, so I use microns for that and uh, speaking of laying things out we already kind of touched on the ellipse templates and uh, the French curves another curve that you can use is this adjustable curve so you just this one's seen better days so it's, it kind of bounces back but if you get a newer one you can pretty much make whatever shape you want and then you can just go through and and draw along that line so uh, an adjustable curve like that is uh, is a good thing to have. Now this is a really cool tool. Um, sometimes you've got, if you've got an art desk and everything, you've, sometimes you've got the, you know, the uh, sort of the the ruler that you can get kind of, I don't know what you call that, I forgot, like a slide ruler. I got it on one of my desks where it just kind of slides down and uh, and then you can use your, um, your, your uh, triangles with that to draw your straight lines and everything. But this is a really good tool because it's so portable and you know, kind of once you set it down, it's not gonna, you gotta get a good one. They've got cheap ones, I've got a cheaper one, but this one's kind of got a metal base and everything. There is a link to this in the description. Uh, I think in the description, if not, like I said, circworks.com slash tools. Um, and you just set it down and basically you can go through and just make your lines like that. Um, it works whatever way you want and it usually doesn't budge I'm, I'm trying to turn it and it doesn't so this is a really awesome tool um, and it's just so great because it's port like I said it's portable um, and you know I use this thing all the time it's great so let's get some of this stuff out of the way all right what haven't I touched on well you're gonna need something to draw on so you are gonna need some paper so uh, what's cool nowadays is comics are I guess common enough that you can go into just like a Michaels and buy pre-ruled comic book pages like this um, this is uh, this is the Statler Bristol brand 
Uh, it is comic size, and if you're not familiar, uh, as American standard size. They probably have a, m a manga version, I'm guessing, uh, but it's 11 by 17, and usually that is, you know, it's usually reduced, obviously, when you because your comics aren't this big. But people tend to draw larger. There's that's not like a hard and fast rule, but. Most people do draw a little larger. I also, Canson also makes a really good uh, uh, pre-ruled artist board. Or you can get these unruled, uh, just at the same size, and you can rule them yourself. Uh, if you are familiar with my uh, Comic Maker Toolkit, you can download that. Uh, there's probably a link uh, to it. Or if you just go to circworks.com, you can download that, and there's probably a link. But the Comic Maker Toolkit has some templates and everything. Um, and this is just, I think this this paper here, this is one of my templates. It's been printed out. You see it's got the branding and everything. This is from the, the, the Comic Maker Toolkit. The one I mentioned before, the free one is the Starter Kit. So there's two different versions. The tool, Comic Maker Toolkit is just like a deluxe version. It's got everything. Comic Maker Starter Kit still has a ton of stuff that you can use to make comics, and that one is free. Um, and you can download that. But if you want, you can also get this uh, the kind of the deluxe comic maker toolkit but anyway so these templates are in there uh, this is a couple different things uh, this is the, the the layout template and also there are some pre-ruled borders like these crazy borders that you can use so so this was printed on uh, I believe it's a, a hammer mill just cardstock 11 by 17 cardstock um, and it, it, at least if you've got a large format printer, it will go through that just fine. And you can you can make your own borders, so you don't necessarily have to get either the the um, the Strathmore or the Canson paper. Uh, both of those really good brands. Not like back in the days, there used to be this brand called Blue Line that was just garbage. You would erase on it, it would just fray and stuff like that. I I don't know if that brand's still around. Uh, maybe if they are, maybe they've improved. But back then, it was really hard. Uh, to, to find good paper for drawing, you know, other than just getting regular Bristol and cutting it down. But now they make all that stuff specifically for comic book creators, which is pretty awesome. So, so yeah, those are some of the analog tools that I use. The other thing that now, uh, I, I mentioned uh, dig, the digital tools, so real quickly, uh, I have the iPad Pro here with the iPad Pencil. Um, I use this uh, mostly for sketching. I don't really draw comics on this, but I know people that do and they can swear by it. Uh, as far as software, um, if I know if you have the subscription to the mobile version of Clip Studio Paint, um, that is available for the iPad. I don't have that. I use Clip Studio Paint on my desktop all the time. That's my favorite program for making comics. I also do certain things in, in Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, so it just kind of, the software just kind of depends. I, I kind of bounce around from a number of different softwares. Uh, but for my sketching, I just use a program called, uh, I think it's called Autodesk Sketch. Is it? No, I think it's Autodesk Sketchbook. So yeah, that's the program I use just for sketching. A lot of people love Procreate. Um, as far as the kind of work that I'm doing, we're just basic sketches. I find uh, Sketchbook to be uh, a lot better for me personally, but many people love Procreate and now, you know, uh, Adobe's coming out with the iPad or the, uh, the Photoshop available for the iPad. I'm sure there are other tablets, but again, this is just the stuff that I use. And this stuff, and the other thing, this, this, this is pretty expensive. It's not, nowadays I think you can get just the regular, the newest regular standard iPad does have Apple Pencil support. So uh, it's a lot cheaper. So depending on where you're coming in, that might be an option for you, or you can always work traditionally. So um, the other thing, the other uh, tools that I use in addition to the Adobe Suite, in addition to uh, Clip Studio Paint, uh, and I'm gonna look into the Affinity uh, uh, family of products as well. Um, I haven't done that yet, but uh, that is also a, a less expensive option than Photoshop if cost is a concern for you. Um, but I have also, you know, I for most of the work that I do uh, in the underground layer, in the command center, I'm using a uh, Cintiq uh, 24 HD. It's an older model, I got it used. Um, but those things hold up really well. They hold up a lot better than, you know, I don't know if this thing will still work in another three years or so, but I wouldn't be surprised if my 
Cintiq just keeps kicking for a while because they're just really built well. So, so those are some of the uh, digital tools and analog tools that I use for making comics. Now, if you guys have any questions on some of the tools that I mentioned, or if you have recommendations on other tools, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, people are always looking for advice on tools and things. So if you can, you know, I'll try to answer the comments, at, you know, and, but if you guys can, don't mind chiming in and letting people know what's some other cool stuff, or let me know what you're using. Maybe you've got, maybe you've got some better solutions than me. So I think all of us as artists, we're always looking for just, you know, new tools or, or, or better ways of doing things. And that's kind of what this thing is all about. So that's going to do it for this bonus episode of Making Comics 101. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.